Hey guys, how's it going? It's Vicious, and welcome back to the next video in the do-it-yourself audio transducer project. Now that we had a video on how to pick out the parts you need to build one of these at home, it is time to actually start the build. So what we have on hand is the actual audio transducer, or right here, nice and heavy piece. And then this is my plate amplifier that we're going to be using to power that with. And then the project for me is going to be attaching it to a computer chair which I have laying over over here. It's kind of dark, but uh, you can make it out a little bit. So let me talk about how we're mounting it. When you mount these transducers, you want to have it in a vertical, not horizontal position. And based on the way that my chair is built, this bottom base plate is the best place to put it for me. It's made out of metal and it has a slight curvature to it. So what I decided to do was find a way to attach this without making it 100% permanent. I want to be able to remove it in case I ever decide to change furniture, move the project, or do something else with it. So that's what I have this here for. This is a piece of 3 quarter inch medium density fiberboard that I used to build my desk with. And I, I've already covered it in some carbon fiber and pre-drilled holes to screw the transducer onto it. What I'm going to be doing is using some adhesive. I've got some liquid nails adhesive. Now I'm going to glue this to the bottom of my chair where I just showed you and then I can screw the transducer onto this. If I ever decide to take the transducer off or move it, I can simply unscrew it without making it permanent. And this piece will be permanent onto the chair because it will be glued, but because it's not very big and it's also nice and black, it's going to match and it won't look obtrusive. So I'm going to go ahead and cut here and start to assemble it and we'll come back when I have everything dried and working. Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Vicious and welcome back to the next part. The uh, video continues as far as the build and setup. As you can see, we have everything installed onto the chair here. Let me explain the process. Uh, last time I recorded, I told you I was going to be attaching a piece of wood on here and screwing the audio transducer onto that, and that worked out fine. I used these bungees that I have on the floor to hold the wood in place while the liquid nails set for 24 hours. Uh, the pre-drilled holes worked out fine. They lined up good. However, the transducer holes themselves were a little bit small for the screws I used, which were just a part of this little screw kit that I had. So what I did with those, uh, just drilled it out. So there's the drill where I drilled out, drill bits, all that. So let's see, onto the business end. Hooking one of these up, you're going to have a lot of options available to you based on your setup. You could go directly from your video game console, directly from your stereo receiver, your TV, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. Uh, a splitter is probably going to be used in some way, shape, or form. My options that I decided I could go from my DAC here and use the headphone out and split it and wear a pair of headphones and run the other to the amplifier on the floor there which is what's powering this. Or I could go from the stereo receiver which is down in there, use the line out and run that to the amp or split the pre-out from the DAC which is coming out the back and then run that to the amp. The third is the one I went with because I can control the volume independently off of the, the DAC here and boost the volume going to this amplifier on the floor without even having to turn on the stereo receiver. So it gives me a little bit more independence that way. On the receiver stuff here, let's see. So this is a, a plate amplifier for a subwoofer, but it's self-contained completely. So it can be run outside of an uh, enclosure on the back side where the speaker wire comes out to your subwoofer. I used a little terminal strip and spliced it into some speaker wire, which I had laying around, some 16 gauge, and that's running up into the transducer. So I've been messing with it all night and let the, uh, the family mess around with it and it's all working pretty good. So far my only issue is this doesn't seem to power it quite as much as I would like and it's kind of over on stats so I'm not sure if this is defective in some way or not but we'll figure that out later. So this is the build and next comes the testing and evaluation of everything. So stay tuned for that guys. 
Okay, everybody, let's close out the build video. Now that I've watched all the footage that I recorded and I got to see what I mentioned while I was recording, I can kind of summarize everything and reemphasize the things that I could have said during recording that are most important about this. Firstly, I mentioned in the video that I did notice that the power output didn't seem like it should be from the amplifier. And since that, I have taken a multimeter to the amplifier and tested it and saw that I had no voltage coming out until I got the gain above 95%. So something seems to be defective with that. Despite that though, even with the malfunction, it still vibrates really well and it feels perfect. So I'm really enjoying the setup right now. I'll do some more testing later on to determine if it's the amp or the transducer that I need to replace and I'll get that set up and going. As far as the mounting, I mentioned that you need to make sure you have this in a vertical orientation. So try to accomplish that by any means. When you are attaching these transducers, make sure that you don't go with what might feel like the most common sense thing to do, which is attached to something that vibrates easily. Say if you were attaching it to your couch and you have you know, something that moves easily in there, you actually want to find the most firm brace that you can. Imagine that you're not trying to, imagine a person, if you grab their arm and you try to shake their arm because you can move their arm easily versus grabbing them on their chest and shaking their whole body back and forth. Even though you can move the arm easier, that would be the wrong place to put your transducer. You want to put it on the most immovable object that would have the greatest effect on the overall mass that you're trying to cause the vibration effect to happen on. So if you have to, feel free to build your own braces across your furniture that will encompass a stronger brace and therefore it'll cause a better effect for you. But so far, everything's hooked up and working well. The setup is the way I'm going to be leaving it because I'm happy with how everything's working. And stay tuned for the last video in this series, which is going to be the review and evaluation of the setup. So thanks again for everybody who donated to this little Kickstart project. And if there's any more donations that ever come in, I'll figure out what to do with that for the next Kickstart project. This is Vicious, and I'll see you guys later.